Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and module number three on reactive chemistry. This is video number 18 and it's the second of the examination of trends that we're going to be looking at. This time it's atomic radius. So remember what we're trying to do is to look at atomic radius in the context of the activity of different metals. So the first thing we've got to do is to identify where our important active metals are. And here is our group one. And right next door are our second group, our alkaline earth metals. And then we've got a number of transition metals that are heading out along this direction. And what you can see, hopefully, um, confirming I guess in some ways patterns we looked at in previous topic is that as we go down the group down the group the atomic radius goes up so you can see what we're doing each time is we're adding an extra energy level or shell or cloud We've got lots of different uh, ways of describing these now either way what happens is that the atomic radius increases this means there's a greater distance between the nucleus and the uh, most outer electrons. What this means, of course, is it makes them easier to remove. So we've got very high activity for metals that are down the bottom of the um, group one element. And also quite a high activity for something like barium, which is at the bottom of the group two metals, the alkali earth metals. In terms of looking at each of these properties, all you're wanting to try and do is get a bit of an understanding about how these different trends, how these different uh, physical properties are related to the activities of different metals. So just by looking at it, we know that over on this side over here, there's only a single outer shell electron for each of these elements. And so that one electron is uh, just being weakly held by the um, nucleus as it gets further and further out and it's also in uh, receiving greater shielding so there's other electrons in the center of this atom between the positive nucleus and the outer shell electron and they're also having a bit of a shielding effect repelling that outer shell electron so we have um, to try and explain some of these different uh, observations in terms of activity we know that um, potassium is particularly active metal we know that sodium is a very active metal but we also know things such as zinc is quite active a metal um, high relatively high up on the activity series copper on the other hand is quite low now these two are right next to each other you you look at the atomic radius and you think doesn't seem to be an awful lot of difference we know that there must be one extra uh, electron in the outer shell and in fact we know that going along here we're actually uh, filling up the 3D uh, subshells as we move along here. So we've got nine of these uh, D electrons and uh, for copper and 10 for uh, zinc. Now, of course, there's also a 4S that's part of this story, and there's two of the 4Ss. And in fact, one of the interesting things about copper is that we know copper can exist as a copper 1 plus or a copper 2 plus and looking at the um, arrangement if we consider for example that each of these is basically the same as argon but then with the 3d 9 4s 2 for copper uh, and then argon with a 3d 10 4s 2 for zinc so zinc is very commonly a 2 plus it can lose these outer two uh, 4s electrons and then the third shell is full and so we have a nice zinc 2 plus ion copper on the other hand can lose these two outer shell electrons and so it's a 2 plus but also what can happen is that one of these electrons can actually drop back let me just put that as an orange so one of the electrons drops back here and if it drops back then there's 10 there and only the one there so that now means that that 3d subshell is full but it leaves just the one electron in the 4s orbital and that would therefore uh, if it was lost form a copper one plus 
This is one of the interesting things that happens with the transition metals, and there's more complex stories for why some of them do other things as well. And it also leads us to the important nomenclature that we write copper 1 for copper 1 plus and copper 2 in Roman numerals for the copper 2 plus. And that's why we use that nomenclature. So hopefully you can see some relationship between atomic radius, um, activity of metals, and even some explanations in there for why we have uh, a few of these different charges. Thanks for watching.